Welcome to the San Francisco 49er Players Show here on Fan Media Network. I'm Mike Schumann, and I'm joined by quite a cast of characters here. Uh, first of all, most of you recognize me probably as a former sportscaster, but prior to the 30 years at ABC, I snuck in eight years in the National Football League and won one Super Bowl ring, the first with the San Francisco 49ers, and of course, nothing like the first time you win anything. Also joining us, Daryl Pollard, a two-time Super Bowl champion with the 49ers, one of the best cover corners ever in the red and gold, and he actually didn't mind laying the wood every now and then, which is unusual for cornerbacks. All right, Dwayne Board, Kiwi we call him, uh, at a North Carolina AT&T. He is a finalist this year for the Black College Football Hall of Fame, and Pee Wee, I think you're a shoe in He won three Super Bowl rings with the 49ers in his 10-year career. And of course, Mike Wilson, wide receiver out of Washington State. Uh, he was kind of my rookie in 1981, his first year with the club. He ended up winning four Super Bowl rings. Six players on the Niners all have four Super Bowl rings. And guys, thanks all of you for joining me today. All right, let's start off. Uh, Niners are four and three. They head up to Seattle, where uh, a couple of you guys have coached. And let's start on the defensive side of the ball. And Dwayne, they lost Nick Bosa and D Ford. That's like losing Dwayne Board and Fred Dean in our day. And yet, uh, the championship depth they've created here has a bunch of no-name players, but they're still putting the pressure on. What, what's your impressions of this defensive line and uh, linebackers? Well, you know, shoot, I think the big thing with the defensive line is the secondary, you know. You got to have that secondary back there covering. And the linebackers, you know, they, they're a major part of it, too. And, you know, going into Seattle this week, they got to look at, well, uh, Carlson is out, Chris Carlson is out, you know, the running back. And uh, there, and also, um, what's the other running back? The guy that was with the 49ers. He's, a, he's got a little hamstring. Yeah, Carlos Hyatt. So, you know, the, the thing that they got to do, man, is, Keep Russell Wilson in the pocket. Don't let him get out the pocket. Just keep him in the pocket. You know, he's dangerous when he's on the move. If you make him stay in the pocket, you know, uh, they got a chance to to upset him, you know. And, and the thing about Russell is he's going to hold the ball. He's looking for the deep ball, you know. That's what he wants to do. He wants to throw that air ball and let the receiver go get it. So, you know, that's the big thing that they got to do this week to beat the Seahawks. And, you know, continue with the Rams, too. And, you know, they got a tough, they have a tough division. With Arizona, man, that's hard. Probably the toughest division in sports right now. Well, DP, I think you would think the other way. You would say you need a good defensive line to put the pressure on the quarterback, which makes it easier on the secondary. I think it was last week. Now, one starter started against New England in the secondary. But yet, what, just what I talked about, this championship death stood up and, uh, I tell you, they did a great job against Cam Newton and the Patriots. Well, I think, yeah. I mean, the difference to me, again, is, you know, we wanted the trenches versus what they did against Miami. And that's going to be an important part of it as well. But I think safety play is going to be extremely important when you have young corners out there. Um, I've always talked about situational play. These players really have to understand the situation they're in and what they're trying to do to you. If, if I had any film to look at, I'd have my secondary really hone in on what just – what Arizona just did and know what they're going to try to uh, counter with this week coming up because they know everybody's going to be watching their film and how they got beat and how they kept Russell from getting down the field this past week. Um, uh, but it's going to be, it's, it should be a great game. I, again, you know, we had this conversation prior to the Miami game and, it, you know, the things I said they need to work on and, and do is what they did and they got blown out. So hopefully uh, um, I'm not a, a nemesis to them as far as when I said they need to do something, they decided to do the opposite. Well, they have two receivers, DK Metcalf, 6'4", 230, runs a 4'3", 5", and then Tyler Lockett is as quick as anybody. You know, that's tough when you got those two opposite type of receivers, and DK Metcalf is a beast. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from a receiver standpoint, when well, you have big, strong receivers, and, and Mike Wilson it was what we considered a big receiver. Right. Day when I you know, he wasn't somebody you wanted to fight at the line. He'd just walk right through you, so... What was the point? The point was letting him take you where the ball was and make sure you stayed over the top. I think that's going to be a very big key part of this is making sure they're down with their techniques. Again, understanding situational play, situational play and stay over the top of the receiver. If they do that, they're going to do pretty well because it forces Russell to kind of hit those those in-between routes, which our linebackers right now with Warner and those guys, they're doing a great job 
of keeping that, that middle pretty much contained. So if they can control and continue to understand those processing routes and know what, what they're giving you, it's not like you're dealing with a mastermind. And I don't want to call Pete Carroll less than, but you know, you don't have someone just drawing stuff up in the dirt like what we see across the uh, across the bay or now in Vegas, how you see them just drawing, a, drawing plays up in the dirt. And you got to try to figure it out as, as the game goes along. All right, let's switch over to offense, Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, as Daryl mentioned, one of the first kind of big receivers that came in the league. I was 6'2", 190. Mike was 6'4", probably 230 back in his day. And uh, so it kind of changed the way uh, teams, you know, attacked you on offense. 49ers, probably the most underachieving position, has been wide receiver. Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, the rookies, are really starting to come along. But, for instance, uh, Debo has caught 11 balls, Mike, in the last two games. Only mm -hmm. one of them passed the line of scrimmage. And Ayuk is going to be a great player. Debo's hurt, won't play this week. But it all seems to be coming back, and of course with George Kittle at tight end, to Jimmy G. Have you ever seen a quarterback so scrutinized he can't throw outside the numbers. He can't throw the ball deep. He just keeps winning. And, you know, what's your thoughts on that as a quarterback? Because, you know, you read that as a teammate, you're going, dude, let Dave lay off this guy for a minute. Yeah. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, I think the 49ers are taking advantage with their offensive scheme. Uh, I think they're doing things that allow them to have success. I, I mean, some coaches just have a system. And, and players have to fit in. I, I'm, what I'm seeing on TV is the 49ers are developing plays that make their players uh, perform. I mean, I'm looking at uh, Samuels in the in the backfield, uh, Debo. I'm sorry. Uh, all these guys are you know being utilized and, and, and on the creative side. And obviously, Kittle was one of the top, if not the top, tight end in the country. I mean, in the NFL. So you're really seeing a system that is. You know, which I enjoy watching is you're creating an offense that, that allows those guys to play at their best. Now, throwing down the field is obviously, you know, as, as you don't throw down the field, defenses will obviously start tightening up and, and blitzing you. But, you know, I think that their offense is, is, you know, on the cutting edge of doing some things different and they're actually moving the ball. And in the old 49er tradition, as you know, Mike, uh, you know, it's always about getting first downs, moving the chains and then taking your shots when you get them. And, and uh, so you're seeing a, not a conventional offense right now, but they're still utilizing their talent to, to, to be successful and make plays. All right, uh, 49ers are four and three. They go to Seattle, Green Bay Thursday night at New Orleans after that. This three-game stretch will determine whether they get to the playoffs. Pee you coached for years up in Seattle. Uh, Niners beat them last year up there. They're trying to beat them for the second time up there for the first time in franchise history. You know how tough it is to win up there. What's your call this week? My call this week, she was like, uh, the Seattle's defense is one of the worst in the league. You know, they're averaging, giving up 490-some yards a game. And, uh, you know, and the 49ers got to look at, hey, how should we attack them, you know? And the thing that they don't have, that Seattle don't have, is a pass rush to shoot to make a difference. And the big key to the game, just what's not there, the 12. So they don't have that crowd, okay? Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like an even playing field, okay? Right. It's, it's going to be a shootout. It's whose def who's, who's defense is going to step up. Well, right now, Seattle don't have the defense to step up to match the 49ers offense, I don't think, shoot. So, hey, I'm riding with them. I'm riding with the 49ers this week. All right, DP, what about you? I, I mean, I definitely I definitely riding with the Niners. I think that the only thing that concerns me is just the injuries that we have on offense. But we are, we're always finding a way, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, which running back they're going to you know, pick the two. That's true. To play because our running game is really the strongest part of our game. I know you mentioned a little bit about Jimmy G. Uh, you know, he's starting to show a little bit more than what we had saw at the very beginning. Uh, it seemed like he's had a lot more personality. He's doing a little bit better reading and delivering the ball where it should be. Uh, I just really look at seeing us possibly doing it. We got to hit those intermediate routes and, and continue to make it work. And uh, I, you know, I, I see a win. I don't see a, a blowout. I think it may even be close like what we saw with the Arizona-Seattle uh, game. I, I just, for some reason, I just feel that. But it, I, I, I definitely going with us, for sure. All right, Mike, you coach for the Cardinals. You know how tough this division is. You know, the Cardinals beat the 49ers and Seattle, so the Niners almost need this win to stay pace in the NFC West. Yeah. You know, I, I, first of all, let's back you know backtrack a little bit. I think you can't discount Russell Wilson 
you know, I'm just looking at him as his performance this year and his ability uh, to come from behind and, 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 of course, with Metcalf. So you're looking at a team that offensively uh, has some great firepower. And as you said earlier, the they, 49ers are missing some defensive linemen. And uh, so it's, it, I, you know, I am, you know, looking forward to seeing an exciting game because I, I'm i not going to predict that the Niners will win, but I, I think Seattle, even though there's not a 12th man, and trust me, that was a major advantage. I've been up there many a times. Uh, Seattle's a, offensively can, with one minute or, or 50 seconds, I've go down the field and score. So if it's a close game, uh, don't count out the surname Wilson. All right, guys, I appreciate your time today. You've been listening to the San Francisco 49ers Player Show on Fan Media Network. For Dwayne, Mike, and Daryl Pollard, I'm Mike Schumann. Thanks for joining us. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, simply create a profile on Fan Media's iOS app or website. Select your teams and make a short intro video on your phone. Show hosts, reporters, former players, and super fans can use our Get Verified feature and make an intro video as well. And our mobile newsroom staff will reach out.